everybody, what's going on today? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a video covering zone hitting and uh, the ins and outs of zone hitting 101. Uh, so uh, you guys do me a favor, as always, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. So the things we're going to cover in this video are going to be zone hitting. Uh, we're going to cover my settings um, and uh, what I prefer to use. We're going to cover uh, the most important thing to success in, uh, in all forms of hitting. Uh, in this game. Uh, we're going to cover uh, my timing mechanism, uh, PCI placement, and uh, kind of how my approach goes uh, towards the uh, towards the plate. And then uh, there's a little bit of a skill gap thing we're going to cover as well at the end. So um, let's get right into some practice though real quick here. And uh, first things first though, I am going to show you the controls, uh, excuse me, not game controls, <laughs> gameplay options. And we're going to go over my settings right fast. So for me, I prefer strike zone view for uh, for zone hitting. And uh, first, let me say one thing real quick. I have learned how to do this and how to uh, uh, start using zone hitting uh, from watching videos uh, of other people doing it. And uh, Magunski in particular is one that I've learned, one of the best in the world um, I've learned from. So uh, so if there's a lot of things maybe that are repeated in here or whatever, I apologize. I, I'm just, it's what I learned and he's the one I learned from. So I want to give credit to him. Uh, but um, but yeah, so I use strike zone view. Um, I used to use on directional and and I you know 17 time World Series player with directional. But uh, I used to use strike zone two and strike zone high um, every once in a while. And uh, but for zone, I prefer hitting uh, the hitting view to be on strike zone because I feel like I can get a better I don't know a better zoomed in view of the ball and uh, where to put the PCI. So. Uh, your in-play view on offense doesn't really matter. That's that's just a, a preference to you. Uh, hitting interface, obviously zone. Uh, that's what I'm using right now. And then uh, your input type buttons, definitely buttons. Don't use analog for uh, for zone. Um, I find that it will be uh, very difficult for you to uh, to get that down, especially if you're a, be a beginner and a, a new person learning to how to use it. So uh, analog type doesn't doesn't matter on that. Uh, let's see, camera shift doesn't matter here. Plate plate coverage indicator on. Yes. All right. So uh, so here's the new thing about this year's game, and they have this uh, the custom PCI that you can do for your uh, uh, for your zone hitting. Um, uh, you know, whatever your preferences are here. So myself, I use this one called Starfighter. Uh, since I'm new to zone hitting, if you're probably a, a long time zone hitting user, you might use uh, the similar ones to uh, to the ones that we've always had. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, you also have now this PCI center. Uh, I don't prefer the little three dots or the diamonds or the circles. So I like the altitude one because it's three lines. You guys will see that in just a second. Uh, you can change the color of your PCI. I prefer a uh, white personally. Um, I think that it is uh, bright enough that I can see it. It doesn't blend in with anything and I can just uh, uh, get it to where I need to. Uh, so the PCI transparency is uh, how much of the, the PCI you can actually see through while it's up on the screen. Uh, so the transparency of the actual uh, PCI that's posted there on your center of your screen is what this is. Your PCI fade out, this is probably the most awesome thing they added this year. Um, it'll allow your outer um, or your inner or both or none of your PCI to fade out uh, as the pitcher goes into their windup. Now me, I prefer the inner and outer both to disappear. I find that this only leaves the center and since that's the part you're really trying to score up on the ball, it allows you to see that particular um, you know, icon right there on the screen that you're moving and uh, kind of, I guess, square up your mouse to it in a way is, is kind of how I think of it, like if it was a PC game. Uh, but um, but that's that's how you would want to uh, to be able to get the most accurate um, uh, square up uh, perfect perfects on balls, uh, if you know, in, in my opinion. Uh, but so, that's kind of difficult for some people, I understand. A lot of people just like the outer to disappear. They like to see the inner and the center part. And uh, I get that completely, but... Let's move on here. We'll go uh, those. So those are my settings there for hitting. We're just gonna we're just gonna play some batting practice here and hit. Uh, we're at the new Rangers ballpark here, Globe Life Field. Uh, so we're facing Zach Granke and playing as the Rangers here, uh, facing the Astros. All right. So the uh, the most important thing to success in all of hitting, and we're gonna cover that in the game now. And this is zone hitting. This is directional. This is analog. I don't I don't care what kind of hitting you're using. This is the most important thing, hands down, in my opinion. Plate discipline. Plate discipline is key, folks. Uh, if you want, if you're not a World Series player, but you're close, uh, I bet you can honestly say to yourself that you probably struggle with uh, with a little bit of plate discipline from time to time. And I'm not saying all the time, but time to time, 
Uh, there we go. Joey Gallo bomb right there. Uh, so so let's uh, let's talk about play discipline and how you can work on it. I've uh, I've got several ways, and I'll make a video here in the next couple weeks that'll uh, uh, tell you guys a little bit more about play discipline and how you can practice on that and making your game better. But um, the number one thing I tell people, and I've told people on this on uh, to this on streams, uh, and uh, I've said it several times. You guys have probably heard it. But my number one piece of advice, if you struggle with plate discipline, is to take maybe until you see a strike the first time through an order. Uh, the first time through your through your lineup, you know, that first couple innings, first few innings, take until you see a strike. Uh, it'll allow you to uh, do a, a number of things. It'll allow you to work the pitcher's count, which is better. It'll about allow you to raise his count, which is awesome. Um, oh, that one, we just bounced right off his face. He's still going to get out because he's slow, though. Uh, but uh, but anyway, it's it's also going to allow you to um, to see more pitches and just adjust uh, it to be able to adjust and be able to notice the angle that it releases out of the pitcher's hand. Maybe what's going to be a strike and what's going to be a ball a little bit better. So uh, you know, it just it it helps it helps quite a bit. Uh, so play discipline is the number one thing to success in this game. You guys got to work on that. You just got to work on it. Like I'm, I'm sitting here playing in practice mode, and I'm probably going to be swinging at just about everything here. Uh, but it's practice. It's like batting practice, so there are going to be strikes anyway. Uh, there's Gallo with another home run. Got to love that, man. We should just sit here and hit with Gallo uh, on repeat and see how many home runs. How many home runs we can hit with him? We might as well, right? Why not? <laughs> All right, so let's also cover now uh, a timing mechanism. So zone hitting... Zone hitting is very timing mechanism based. And I know uh, you're probably thinking, wait, directional is the timing based one. No, 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 no. Zone hitting is more uh, timing based than I think a lot of people give it credit for. And uh, a timing mechanism uh, is something that allows you to be able to time the pitches and uh, and maybe a count or, or something that, that allows you to feel more comfortable in uh, when to start your swing. All right. So the one that McGunsky teaches is uh, is a click, click, click. Like he does three clicks, all right? And those three clicks are going to be in the, in the this spot. And this is how I learned how to do it, all right? Now, I don't do it with clicks. Uh, I do it with counting. Uh, but uh, when the pitcher releases his hands from the glove, when he, pull, when he separates the glove from his hands, uh, or the, his hands from his hand from his glove, sorry, uh, as he's about to throw the ball, that's the first click. So watch on this next one, and I'll actually click along with it. Uh, the second click is going to be when he actually his foot actually hits the ground. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Click. All right. So the first click is that first click right there when he separates the hands from the glove. All right. Like I said, the second click is going to be when his foot hits the ground. All right. When he uh, releases the ball and his foot hits the ground. Watch this. Click. Click. Boom. All right. So that's kind of how I'm going to, you know, I guess you can teach it like that. I guess like that song, click, click, boom. <laughs> but uh, so that's number one and two. We'll do it again here. Click, click. There you go. All right. So what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to develop a timing mechanism. And it may take you a couple innings into a game to get it. But once you get it down, you're going to be just smashing the ball, man. It's going to be crazy. So, um, you know, and you're not going to get a hit every time. Uh, you're not going to start playing like McGunsky and pitching Rebel immediately or anything like that. Uh, but you guys are going to get a lot better, I think, uh, uh, following this method. So the timing mechanism is great. I do a one, two, three. The third one, um, the third one kind of is on your own. But uh, the third one is actually when the uh, when the pitcher releases the ball. Uh, so you're going to go one, two, three. Ah, I was a little bit late on that one. All right, that's, that's on me. Oh, I was early. I'm sorry. It looked like I was late. One, two, three. There we go. So you're just gonna get a count. You're gonna you're gonna kind of in the first couple innings get a rhythm down of it, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna make sense. And then you're gonna start doing it the rest of the game. So uh, that'll that'll be very helpful for you. All right, let's cover PCI placement. All right. So the PCI, and you guys can see this custom PCI I've got here with the Starfighter and the Aviator thing. Uh, you can see how it disappears, like I was telling you about in the uh, in the settings uh, earlier. Uh, but what I want to talk about is uh, PCI placement, all right? And a lot of people, you know, I, I, a lot of people that watch the channel and stuff try to tell me uh, maybe, I apologize, guys, they are doing uh, yard work outside. So if you guys can hear yard work going on out there, I'll try to remove the noise from the mic, but uh, sorry about that. So anyway, a lot of people tell me on the channel, though, 
that um, you know they started like up and in. Uh, they started up and in up here because uh, that high pitch is like the the harder pitch for them to get. So uh, they'll they'll start it back up up there at the at the top. Um, I personally, you know, have just been using it. I can't believe that made it out. Wow. Uh, for a short period of time. And some people probably use it out here too on the outside. I have been using zone for a short period of time. I started in the last like month uh, of 19 using it. So, um, I started using it down here, uh, just barely low and inside. And for me, it became easier to move the PCI up than it was for me to move the, the PCI down. Uh, I guess kind of think of it is if you if you take your thumb and you hold your thumb level uh, and you try to move your thumb down, you don't have as much function moving it down as you do if you move it up. So just physically, you have more range of motion to be able to move up than you do to move down uh, with your thumb. So it'll just give you a little bit, uh, a little bit easier of access, I guess, to be able to uh, get the PCI squared up on the baseball itself. Um, there's another reason that I like to start it down low, and uh, McGunsky taught me this as well in his video. So, um, you know, what you're trying to cause, uh, because zone is so home run based, what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit home runs, okay? Uh, so when you're trying to hit home runs, what do you want to cause? You want to cause backspin and lift on the ball, all right? So if you start low and raise high to the ball, you're more likely to cause lift when uh, when the bat approaches the ball itself uh, and actually makes contact, all right? So that's going to cause you to have a, uh, a better home run result. Um, there's one of those outfield crazy mistakes that needs fixed in the game right now. But uh, yeah, starting, starting low is gonna provide you with that lift. Now you're not gonna hit one every single time, uh, but you also will notice you'll hit into way more double plays. I'm not saying you won't hit it any, you will hit in some. Uh, but you will pop up the ball more um, as well doing that. But when you do get lift on it, man, and if you can really get that timing down, you're going to have one of those lightning games where you just, I mean, you, you catch lightning in a bottle and uh, it's just home run fest right there. So PCI placement for me, low and in, look at that. Oh my gosh, light tower power of Joey Gallo right there. I thought that was going to hit the upper deck. That was a nice one. All right, so, so that's PCI placement. All right, so we've covered settings, uh, plate discipline, uh, we've covered timing mechanism and PCI placement. Uh, the uh, the second to the last thing I want to cover here is what zone is all about. Zone hitting is all about sitting on fastballs, you guys. It is about sitting on fastballs. The timing mechanism that I taught you um, and that uh, that I learned personally from McGunsky there, just uh, just watching his videos. Um, the timing mechanism is solely based on fastball timing. When they throw a changeup. Um, and this is where the last thing I want to talk about comes into play here. Also, the skill gap. When they throw a changeup or a curveball or an off-speed pitch of any type, uh, that particular pitch is going to be uh, where the skill gap uh, comes into play. Your third uh, click or number or count or whatever of your timing mechanism is not going to be as effective when you get to that point because it's based on fastballs. Now, most players will throw a majority of fastballs in the game. If you wind up in a game where you notice that a player is throwing a majority of off-speed pitches, then you're going to have to make that adjustment, all right? I'm not saying it's never going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to have to make that adjustment. And, um, you know, that's just that's just one of those things we all have to deal with. That's fine. But for the most part, most players you play are going to be fastball heavy and very, uh, very much so throwing fastballs. So, that's what you want to focus on, and that's what you want to just go up there, sit on fastballs, adjust to off speed. That's what I say. Sit on fastballs, adjust to off speed, and uh, see the ball hit the ball pretty much, man. I mean, uh, you know, with the with the timing mechanism, that's that's going to be great. But like I said, that final thing is skill gap, and the skill gap is going to come into play on two things. Uh, it's going to come into play, like I just said, on adjusting to off speed pitches, and it's also going to come into play on your ability to uh, to move the PCI uh, and adjust it to where where it works best for you. Look, if you don't find that low and in for you is a better PCI placement, that's okay. Uh, you know, it, that's that's okay. I understand that. Now, I you know I gave you the reasons why I think it's it's best to keep it kind of there, but um, 
for you, you might have a different range of motion of your hands a little bit more than I do. Okay, I'm 38. I'm a little older. Um, you know, it's it's a little more difficult for me. I get a little arthritis every once in a while. So, uh, but you might have a little bit ease of access more to be able to uh, to move down uh, than I can. And uh, if holding it up works for you, that's fine. Uh, so you can make your own little tweaks and adjustments to these uh, uh, to these things. But the really the big two things that I suggest everybody really works on. Uh, is uh, is plate discipline and the timing mechanism. Those are the two things that if you can get down and work on, you will get so much better in this game. So uh, I hope this video has helped everyone. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. A big thank you uh, on my behalf. I got to give a big thank you to McGunsky for helping me learn how to use zone. There goes the, uh, the leaf blowers outside again or the weed eaters. Uh, cutting the grass. Sorry about that. But a big thank you to him uh, for uh, making his video and helping a lot. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely go check his uh, his channel out and his video out and uh, give him a subscribe as well. And uh, you guys do me a favor. As always, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And uh, we will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.